The first thing you'll notice is that we're here inside of our web browser at soundation.com. And that's what makes this application so unique, but also so accessible. Because now all you need is an internet connection and you can start making music. But before we start making music, let's just clear off a few housekeeping items. Number one is making an account, and it's really easy to do. You can see that I'm logged in here, and you'll have the choice between a free account or a pro account. Now, I would say if you're going to be using Soundation as your primary digital audio workstation, you're probably going to want to go with a pro account. However, if you know that you're going to move forward and use something that's standalone, that doesn't use the internet at all, in that situation, I'd say go ahead and choose a free account. However, if you are going to choose a free account, and you're going to continue on making music in a different digital audio workstation, but you support their cause, like we do here at the Sermena Project, you might want to go in and buy a couple of packs from their sound shop. I don't normally recommend working with samples and buying sample packs, but with the case of Soundation, I make an exception because it's amazing what they offer to us for free and to help them grow and to offer new features. Maybe buying a sample pack or two isn't such a bad thing. I also want to point out that to optimize the performance of Soundation, you're going to want to limit the number of tabs you have open. Don't have 30 tabs open with your Facebook and your Twitter and your email because guaranteed as you're working and trying to make music, you'll get a bunch of different pop-ups and notifications and trust me, those can be very, very distracting. Also just for the performance in general, for how smoothly it runs, when Soundation crashes, it crashes and it doesn't give you the option to recover your work. So let's launch the studio and make sure we're getting some sound. Now with most digital audio workstations, if we were to go into settings and click edit settings, we'd see that we'd have an option to choose our audio interface, driver type, etc. With Soundation, we don't see that. And that's because the audio coming into Soundation is a slave to the audio going into your internet browser, meaning that you need to have the global preferences set to the audio interface you want to use. If the term audio interface is totally foreign to you, then you don't have to worry. You should be good to go and you'll hear sound right away. But let's say that you have a set of speakers and a couple of microphones that you want to be able to plug into your computer you're not going to be able to do that without an external audio interface, something that allows for you to connect those cables in so that you can then bring that information into the computer. And if we go and look at a modern digital audio workstation, when we go to preferences and audio, you can see we have those choices here. This would be the equivalent of driver type. And with the Macintosh system, core audio is totally great because you can see our sample rate goes up really really high. On the PC, it's not quite as simple, and you might want to look into an ASIO driver. Just Google that, do the research, and you'll see if it's right for you. And in most cases, when you start to work with other digital audio workstations besides Soundation, it probably will be the way to go. But notice I could choose an input device here, I could choose an output device here, and we just don't have that option with Soundation. So what do we have to do? Well, on the Macintosh system, it's very, very simple. I'll just go down here, I'll open up my system preferences, go into sound, and then make sure I have the correct device selected. And in this particular instance, I'm going to be using this audio interface here, the Duet. The type of interface doesn't matter, just make sure you have all of those drivers downloaded and installed, and then it should pop up here on your output device. All right, so let's go ahead and just find a sound and try it out. I'll just click the preview. Great, so if you can hear that, you're good to go. But what if we want to bring audio into Soundation? What if we want to record into the program? What are we going to have to do for that? Well, interestingly enough, we're actually going to find that in the edit settings under the recording settings. Now, we're not going to do any recording in this course, but I just want to show you how to set this up and how to avoid any potential problems that you might have really in any digital audio workstation. So I'll go into record settings and I'll choose the microphone that I want to use. And I actually could use the built-in microphone. That would be totally okay. And you can see that we're occasionally getting a little bit of signal down here, but it's super low. So I can turn up the record volume here and it starts to increase. 
So now what I'm going to do to actually record into the program is choose an audio channel. And to choose it, you just click on it. And I'll click the record button here. And I'm going to go ahead and say allow. And now I am recording something inside of Soundation. Great, and I can stop it. And you can see that we're at a very clean input level. And if we play this back, and now I am recording something inside of Soundation. We can hear that I have a really nice recording. One thing to watch out for though, is if in your system preferences, under your input, and let's say that we're using the internal microphone as our input, and we have this input volume set pretty high, for example, you can see that we're starting to go to the very top. And now I go back into my settings. And even if I bring, uh-oh, we're, uh -oh, getting, we're getting feedback, feedback, and that's the first sign that we're already way too loud. But I can bring this way down, and even if I do bring this way down, and we're not getting that nasty feedback, when I record in, here is a second recording with Soundation. Number one, notice what's going on down here. You can see we're at the very, very top. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and stop this. Whoa, and look at that waveform. So now, even if I turn this way down and I play it back, we're going to hear what sounds like a lot of distortion, like my voice isn't very clear at all. Here is a second recording with Soundation. Number one, notice what's going on down here. You can see we're at the very, very top. And it doesn't matter how low I turn this down, it's always going to be distorted. And that's a very important concept with digital audio. So I'll be talking about this more and more, but always watch your meters down here. They're not very big, they're actually very small. And if you're not careful, it's very easy to work at insanely loud levels inside of Soundation. And that's something you want to try and avoid. All right, so now that we know how to bring sound in to Soundation and how we can actually listen back, let's start making some music. <laughs> 